On today's episode, MIT develops the strongest magnet in the world, and manufacturers want flexibility post-COVID-19. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. You know, hardly a week goes by without some new breakthrough in fusion energy development. And this week there's a big one. Commonwealth Fusion Systems, an MIT spin-off, and MIT's Plasma Science and Fusion Center have announced the successful test of the world's most powerful electromagnet. Now, magnetic containment is the key to the tokamak technology which is under development around the world for commercial scale fusion energy production. The magnet uses high temperature superconductors and compared to other devices that attain very high field densities for short periods of time, the new development has achieved a sustained magnetic field of more than 20 Teslas. Now, Commonwealth Fusion predicts that this field strength is sufficient to allow the company's Spark Compact Tokamak to achieve net energy from fusion. Now, this would be a historic first, as significant as Fermi's first fission reactor in Chicago in 1942. A Commonwealth's approach is the opposite of large-scale tokamak research like the ITER project, and uses a very small device. Now, this requires a very high magnetic field strength, although stronger magnets should be beneficial at any scale. 160 tokamaks have been built around the world, and Commonwealth hopes that their physically smaller devices will allow faster development, lower costs, and a quicker path to net energy. The new high-temperature superconducting magnet will be installed in their Spark tokamak, which is under construction in Massachusetts. The team hopes to demonstrate net energy from fusion by 2025, followed by a commercially viable power plant demonstrator called ARC. It's an exciting time for fusion energy research, with competing technologies ranging from tokamaks, stellarators, lasers, mechanical compression, and others. Several have reported very high temperatures and real progress in achieving scientific and even engineering break-even is at hand. We'll be watching closely and report back as all projects advance. If you liked this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. Talent management will separate how manufacturers perform in the future in ways unimagined before the COVID-19 pandemic. That's the conclusion of a new report from the Manufacturers Alliance entitled The Future of Flexible Work in Manufacturing – Workforce Priorities for a Hybrid World. The report, produced in collaboration with business services firm Aon, found five major drivers of success for manufacturers as they shift out of the pandemic and into the future. The first is talent acquisition, development, and retention. Well, they're paramount, with more than half of executives ranking talent availability as a top factor shaping the future of work. Two, the hybrid work model will prevail for salaried workers in manufacturing as 80% of companies expect to formalize a flexible remote and in-person approach for employees during the next 12 months. Three, 85% of companies are empowering leaders across the organization to define their hybrid models, rejecting an entirely corporate-led approach. Four, despite important organizational learning during the pandemic, cultural resistance to change is seen as the biggest barrier to future of work strategies and priorities for 59% of manufacturing executives. And finally, five, emerging priorities such as environmental, social, and governance, that's ESG, and diversity, equity, and inclusion will likely shift to long-term imperatives, as reflected in a ranking of function priorities for leaders in finance, human resources, legal, and compliance. Another significant finding from the report is the continued acceleration of change and the importance of leadership skills for adaptability. Digital skills shortages are anticipated to last for years, and talent shortages in general are now amplified by rising demand, new technologies, and other job opportunities. All these factors contributed to near record levels of openings in the manufacturing sector this spring, according to the U.S. Department of Labor. A key takeaway from the report? Adaptability is the key to survival post-COVID. And that extends from worker skills in the shop floor to HR practices in the front office. The regular 9 to 5 workday may be a thing of the past, and successful companies will need to adopt alternate staffing models, flexible work hours, incorporation of part-time or split shift work, and alternate sources of skilled talent, such as older workers. Great people are in short supply, and manufacturing needs a lot more of them. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.